Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we are discussing a technique called force field analysis and this technique falls within the strategic choice phase. And remember strategic choice is where you are making a decision about which strategy to follow among the many options that you have in front of you. And of course as a business you don't want one path, you want to have multiple paths to choose from. And let's say this is the business strategy, this beautiful little rocket here that you want to test before going ahead and implementing it that whether this is a good opportunity or a good strategy to follow or not. Now the concept of force field analysis says that on any business strategy or any business decision for future growth, there are two types of forces. One you can see on the left here, one you can see on the right. The one on the left are called the drivers or the driving forces. These are all the forces internally or externally that are pushing the business to go ahead with this strategy. So in favor. On the other hand, the business will also face certain restrainers, the ones on the right. And these are those forces or those factors that are against the business going ahead with this strategy. So it pays a business, it pays well in the future to make sure that they have gone through the entire process of testing their strategy, perhaps through a soft launch or other stress testing processes before deciding on any one particular strategy. <coughs> and the force field analysis sits in the middle of that. Now, of course, as a business, you with whatever strategy you want to pick, you want to make sure you have picked the one that has more drivers and fewer trainers. So the idea is always to make sure that your drivers are as high as possible or as many as possible and the restrainers are as few as possible. When you have a situation where your drivers outweigh your restrainers, that's when the company can be sure about their business strategy and go ahead with it. And that situation arises and then would the business then start seeing its growth strategy take off into the stratosphere. So now let's try to construct a force field analysis and see how a business would implement this technique. Again, this rocket here signifies our strategy and let's say business has come up with one of the strategies of introducing new technology to increase capacity. Okay, that's the way they want to go in the future. They want to be able to produce more so that they can sell more. They feel one of the way to do that is to introduce new technology to increase capacity. Now we know that there are some pros and cons of such a decision. The pros would be the drivers. The biggest pro is their cost saving from economies of scale. You can produce more units. You will also reduce material wastage because computers don't make mistakes as, as many as compared to human labor. And thirdly, you know that it can also be used for improved customer service through use of AI, make an online shopping experience a bit more fun. The cons or the restrainers on the other hand of introducing new technology is, we know that there's an addition, uh, there's a heavy capital cost. So the equipment's probably going to be expensive. You know that once the technology comes in, you have to make some workers redundant, which will lead to high levels of demotivation. And finally, you know that once you let go of these workers, they might go to the trade unions and there could be possible industrial action against you. So these, this is the decision and these are the pros and cons. Now, what a business does at this point is that they start assigning a score or a value to each of these drivers and restrainers. And this could be out of 5 or this could be out of 10. We're going to take this out of 10. And they start rating each of these drivers and restrainers to give them some sort of a weightage. So let's say when we look at the drivers, the cost savings from economy, the scale, we want to see how important this driver is. So out of a 10, let's say I'm going to give this a 5. Let's say that's how important I feel that is. Reduction of material uh, wastage. Uh, that's good. So let's say that's a six and improve customer service. Uh, I feel that workers can do a better job. So let's say that's a three. And then I total this up. So five and six, 11, 11 and three, 14. That's what the score on the driver's side is. 
on the restrainers let's say cost of equipment the company has some money they will only have to take a little bit of a loan so i'm going to give this a five Workers are a big part of my organization. If they get demotivated, that's troublesome. So I'm going to give this an eight. And let's say industrial action, I'm going to give this a two. Maybe I've had good relationship with the trade union in the past. So when I total these up, that's eight and five, 13 and two, 15. And right now I'm in a situation where my drivers are lower than my restrainers. At this point, the business cannot go ahead with this strategy. So what do you do? How do you balance this out? Well, there's only two ways to do this. If you think about it, the only way to fix this problem is either to reduce my restrainers or to improve my drivers, right? Anyway, I do that and I tilt the balance of this strategy. Only then would I be able to go ahead with it. So what do you do? When I look at the restrainers, I see that number two, worker redundancy is a big problem. It's an eight out of a 10. So I'm going to Narrow that down and bring that here in the bottom. That's what basically businesses are doing. They're trying to narrow it down to that one factor that has the biggest impact on the strategy. And once you figure that out, then you come up with remedies for it. So if you know that some workers will be made redundant, perhaps what you need to do is you need to give them cash payouts, right? That's one way to keep them happy and quiet. Or whoever you wish to retain you need to introduce a retraining program so if you can take these steps perhaps this number score of eight could be reduced to let's say a five now i'm in a situation where this 15 has turned into a 12 and now my drivers outweigh the restrainers if this is achieved only then can I go ahead with my strategy of introducing new technology. Now, before we conclude, just a few points of evaluation on this technique. First of all, whenever you're using force field analysis, these drivers and restrainers can change due to changes in the external environment. Remember, they are dynamic and sometimes you may feel that the equipment was rather cheap so it was okay for you to buy it on your own but maybe a little bit later it becomes more expensive because the exchange rate went up and now you have to find more money to buy the same piece of equipment so these can change the drivers and the trainers the drivers and the trainers themselves as well as the scores assigned to them secondly the scores that are being assigned and when you when you saw me do it i was doing it as i felt right you would have done it and might be, maybe you would have given them different scores, which shows that this technique is highly subjective. Each analyst may assign a different score to each force and that means the final conclusion of this technique will be very different every time. For that purpose, you need to make sure you have a skilled hand at it who's able to identify the relevant forces and assign the correct numbers or the score to it. And finally, this technique of force field analysis by itself is not enough. It needs support from all the other strategic choice techniques before you can really decide which is the one technique that you want to follow into the future.